But Ted, in all reality, um, I've been in law enforcement almost a half a century and the changes and things that I've seen. But I can, from starting back in the 60s, certain cases that I've been involved in, I still think about them. I still take them home with me. And the incident at Riverbend, um, every time I hear the word active shooter or Riverbend, I get cold chills to this day. And yes, as a sheriff, you lose a lot of sleep. You worry about the community. Uh, you're responsible for the community as a sheriff and not just the students, but the faculty and the people in the community and the deputies that are responding to these calls. And it's not something that you uh, come to work tomorrow and you forget. It's there, you think about it. Uh, unfortunately, you think about what it could have been. You know, I just thank God it turned out the way it did that uh, being proactive, we got out in front of this incident. But as I reflect back on my career of many, many years, I can uh, still remember lots of cases that there are nights I'd like to be able to lay down and go to sleep without thinking about them. And uh, it's just something that when you're in this profession, you, you don't forget it. It's always there and it's always with you. Well, I, I could see in your eyes when we talked the other day that you, you know what some of the communication was and you know some of the things that were planned and uh, that's got to haunt you at times. It does haunt you, Ted, when you think about, uh, I've said this so many times, it's sad that uh, things have changed so much in my career that we now have to protect our churches and our schools and our citizens who are shopping in Walmart. You, you just have to be so proactive and be aware of your surroundings and always be looking. But you you can't just flip a switch and forget about it. It's, it's there, it's part of your life, it's always gonna be part of your life. And especially when students are involved or kids are involved, it's just, uh, you'll have it forever. And you carry that burden with you when you're in law enforcement. It's uh, something that you're trained to do and something that uh, it will always be with you. You carry it as sheriff, and I, but, but I think of deputies who come up upon accidents or go into homes and, and encounter things. Well, any time that you put that badge and gun on in the morning, Ted, you don't know what your day is going to consist of. You, you do come up on serious accidents where people are hurt and dying, and uh, you see kids that are physically abused, and the things that you deal with on a daily basis. Uh, a police officer probably sees more in a month than the average citizen can even imagine in a lifetime. But when you uh, have the responsibility to, to protect and serve, and that's been your uh, life's goal, or that's been your choosing to do that, you have that responsibility and you always have to be prepared. And you can't just, it's easy to say, well, go home and don't think about it and come back to work tomorrow, but it doesn't work that way. You, you carry it with you every day of your career and the rest of your life. I guess you have to deal with that with, with your deputies, with your personnel of, uh, of thinking of that uh, among, amongst other things. I do, Ted. I worry about the uh, ladies and gentlemen that work in law enforcement, not just my agency, but all the other ones that we deal with, the things they see every day and the things they carry with them every day. And I worry about my guys. There's a lot of stress and there's a lot of pressure. And when you're knocking on someone's door at four o'clock in the morning, tell them their baby was just killed in an accident or their son's not coming home or their daughter's not coming home. Uh, those are things that uh, it's there. It's a fact of life and it's up to law enforcement to deal with it and try to make the right decisions and do the best for everybody to help the family deal with it. It's, it's, a, t it's a tough job. Sheriff, one thing I think we've all gotten to really see in the last week is the fact of the, the, uh, the specialized training, the equipment that uh, you have to deal with. And, and I, I know you're always looking to the future for uh, equipment that will help you. Well, I've seen a lot of changes in, in many, many years. And uh, um, the technology that's out there now and that is available now, it is a constant training, not only for the deputies on the road to properly use all the equipment and to be properly trained on everything. Uh, an example now is the body camera issue, Ted. Uh, I want body cameras for every deputy here because I just think it's the right thing to do. Uh, I think it protects the citizens. I think it protects the law enforcement officers. Um, unfortunately, technology is very expensive. It doesn't matter whether you're dealing with law enforcement or whether you're dealing 
uh, with the operation of a personal business. Any uh, changes in technology cost a lot of money. So as sheriff, I try to be uh, very frugal with taxpayers' money. And being a taxpayer, I don't like paying high taxes. But being a sheriff, I want a little bit of everything. So have to try to reach that happy medium. But um, I am really, I have something in the works now that I'm so excited about. I ha actually have a well-known businessman in our community that uh, came to me and based on our uh, community policing concept, uh, this person has agreed to purchase body cameras for uh, all the deputies here in Spotsylvania. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, the one issue is he doesn't want to do it until after January 1 for tax reasons, and I certainly don't have a problem with that. But we currently do have a program going, a little pilot program uh, with a few body cameras to see what type of cameras we need, what would best fit the situation for Spotsylvania County. So I'm excited about that. But back to your original question uh, on technology, just keeping the deputies properly trained, Ted, with all the equipment, all the technology, all the advancements, uh, it's a full-time job, just keeping the guys trained to do the right thing on the road. So uh, technology has changed a whole lot since the 60s. And I guess how you deal with situations, like you, I would think you learn from the Columbines, you learn from all of these horrible tragedies, you're able to pick, law enforcement is able to pick things out of that and you, it changes how you deal with them. It does, it, and it changes almost now, Ted, on a daily basis. Uh, what we did with bomb threats and incidents in school 20 years ago is so far outdated now. And you know from conversations we had, I never talk about school security and how we approach it and how we train for it because, as I said Sunday, that makes everybody on an even battlefield and that's not what it's about. But just to keep up with the technology and you do you do learn from Columbine and all the school shootings and uh, the church shootings and all the violence that uh, unfortunately we have to learn from. But that also aids in the technology and uh, how you approach incidents is how you train your guys to deal with it. At one point in time, uh, if there was a uh, active shooter in a school or a business, you surrounded the building and you just waited till everybody was there. Well. All that sort of thinking from back 15, 20 years ago is out the window. There's a lot more uh, aggressive stance that we take now as law enforcement to deal with the issues. And finally, the uh, despite all the technology and all that you know, it still comes down to, and we talk about it all the time, if you see something, if you see something online that's disturbing, tell somebody. I will say this. The incident at Riverbend, I wish I could just sit here and tell you everything I know, Ted. But there is a student in that school that is a hero. Excuse me. Had it not been for a student coming forward and talking with uh, SRO Larry DeBella and talking with the staff at the school, this conversation you and I are having right now would be a lot more uh, gut-wrenching than it already is. But there was a student in that school that saw something that wasn't right and did the right thing, Ted, and came forward. A lot of times people say, well, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to do this. What will my friends think? But when this is all said and done, I plan on recognizing a student at that school as a truly a hero to this county and hope I can make that person known to everybody in the county because uh, just from coming forward and seeing and hearing something that shouldn't have been done allowed uh, Larry DeBella to start an investigation with the school and get out in front of this thing that we were able to bring it to the successful fruition that we have done so far. And I'm so proud of the guys. And I can sit here for days and talk about my deputies and our sheriff's department. But the, the true hero in this deal is a student at Riverbend. And uh, that's what you, you've heard me say a million times. If it doesn't look right and it doesn't feel right, you live and die by gut reactions, Ted. And if something is not right, whether you're a student in a school and something happens at the school or whether you're coming out of uh, the town center at Christmas and something doesn't feel right, well, you need to take action and, and stay alert and be on your guard. And at a point in time where people aren't even safe on a military base, 
So how do you think the average citizen is safe in public? So it's sad that we deal with this, but it's a fact of life. And after 9-11, our world has changed forever. And it's so even easier for a lot of us to think someone else will do it. I don't need to. I think that's one of the, the biggest uh, problems that I have had in my law enforcement career. As you investigate serious cases and as things unfold, you find out, well, yeah, I heard something about that, but I didn't want to get involved or I didn't want to take action or I didn't want to stop at the scene of that accident because I want to get home and watch a football game. But I think people have a responsibility to be involved in the community and to make it safe and, and uh, help one another. That's the way I was raised back in the country many years ago. You know, they say good fences make good neighbors, but good neighbors make good neighbors. And I think everybody needs to work together, Ted. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ted, as always. Thank you very much.